there. Troy Swankin from Green Day on the Water Guide Service. Welcome to this episode of Fishing and Hunting in the North Country. We are on a busy Twin Cities area lake. Oh, he's got a face full of hooks. And we are targeting bass this morning. We're targeting uh, bass up on shallow, well, shallow to mid depth, six to 10 foot weed flats. Uh, I caught this one on a, it's early in the morning, nice and calm. So starting out with the top water here. This is a Rapala skitter prop, frog color. Uh, started out with this bass. We've had one other bass already hit a top water, but jump and come off. Uh, we've also got a spinner bait going. I'm gonna put him back. And have been pushed a couple of times on that. So uh, we're gonna show you just today's show is gonna be about targeting bass scattered on mid-depth, shallow to mid-depth, depending on the lake, flats, weed flats, and fishing horizontally through the tops of the weeds or above the weeds, uh, targeting bass scattered out on those flats that are feeding up. This time of year, late June into early July, they're feeding up on sunfish. We've got little sunfish following our baits and splashing all over around here. And the bass are sitting down in the weeds, looking up, feeding on them. So we're bringing horizontal baits across the top to look like what they're feeding on. Uh, we'll show the equipment a little more and some more of the baits and techniques as we go along. Stay with us. Got to a spot here. I'm grabbing something my dad made on the first cast. Drilled one here on a spinner bait. Not real big, but active aggressive one. Get back at it here. My dad, Nate, this happens sometimes when you're fishing bass that are feeding on sunfish, you got a big pumpkin seed sunfish there. Drilled that spinner bait, that's how aggressive they get. The whole food chain going on. Hey, you know what? It takes skill to catch a sunfish on that big hook. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got a jumper there. You had a little nicer one drill the top water. Some of them have just been slurping the top water, but this guy came right out of the water. What do you like to get it? Or grab him like this because that bait, got a little trouble hooks in there. Look at that. That's a hungry fish. T-bone that bait, got both hooks across the sides of his mouth. There's one. Skitter prop from Rapala, really top water bait. We get a picture of that one and we'll let it go. We'll be back when we get some more. And my son Parker got one on the top water here. He's getting down in the weeds. There he comes. So he picked up some weeds. He just came up and hammered that top water again. Nice one in there amongst all those weeds. Get all those weeds off and we'll get a little better shot of him. I'll help you out with that there, buddy. Oh. <laughs> All right, my son Parker, got another one here. This one on the frog. 
skitter pop. Came up and just crushed it. So we are on a, a reef here, a weed covered reef, and one end of the reef, just back behind my dad back there, has got some firm bottom that doesn't have weeds and is covered with sunfish beds yet. This late in June, there are still all kinds of big hybrids, pumpkin seeds, and bluegills. We have all three on this lake. And then the weeds right out here next to those are full of schools of female sunfish. And that's what these bass are eating on is these little females. As a matter of fact, at the same time we had a double, we caught a little female sunfish, came up and hit the topwater bait. That's what the bass are feeding on right there. And they're looking up and coming up and feeding at the surface. That's why these surface baits are working well. My dad's buzzing the spinner bait close to the surface. Uh, jerk bait will probably work here once the sun gets too high for top water. A square bill crank bait wobbling just below the surface. We'll be trying all those things. All right, my son Parker, another one come up and slam that. Oh, that's a nice one there. Came up and slammed that uh, frog colored skitter pop. Oh, quick release. That was a nice one. They're really hammering that top water right now. All right, gonna see how aggressive these sunnies can get. I just had a pumpkin seed here come up and drill a top water. And then if we turn back right before that, there's a hybrid that drilled my dad's spinner made, a pumpkin seed bluegill hybrid. So they're hitting the sunfish, are hitting the bass baits. Um, we're gonna continue fishing bass for a while here, but then we're gonna go check out those sunnies on the beds and uh, with some smaller panfish sized stuff. And, We'll shoot a little video of that and add it to the end here. Hey, my dad Nate's got another one on the spinner bait. Bad fish. Still just working this kind of weedy reef right over the tops of the weeds with top water baits, spinner baits, jerk baits. Hey, got a nice one here on up. Slam the top water bait. Looks like he ate it good. Oh yeah, came up and T-boned it again. Get a hold of him there with all those hooks. Yeah, there you go. See how he just tried to eat that skitter prop. They're coming up after those little sunfish swimming around by the top. And this thing's skipping around by the top. Catches their attention. and. Um, we should talk about how we're fishing our baits here, but first we'll get a picture of 16 and a half, 17 inch through there. So the skitter prop, we'll go through the different baits we're using, the top water. We've got a little ripple on the water this morning, so I like a prop bait. Uh, this is a single prop in the back here. I like a prop bait when there's a little ripple, dead calm, then you can still use this, but then I'll go with a popper style bait too with a big flat front that makes a chugging noise. This makes kind of a swooshing noise and then you get wake from the prop. And it just shows up a little better in the ripples. Uh, we're throwing this out, give it a good jerk. And some days you have to pause a long time, some days not as much. Uh, today they've taken, we've had one fish hit it while we were jerking it, but most of them have taken it on the pause and we're doing about a three to five second pause. So you have to be patient. A lot of people throw it out, jerk and go, oh, that's three seconds. And no, that was like half a second. You gotta give it a good pause in there. And they usually come up, sometimes they come up like that one and break water and splash. And other times you'd be surprised a three pound bass will just come up and just slurp it in. And you just hear a little ripple and see your bait go under. Uh, the big thing with these top water baits, don't set the hook when you hear a splash or see a splash. Just hang on, let the fish pull it tight. A lot of people that are watching that bait and they see the splash and they jerk and they wind up jerking the bait away before the fish can get it sucked in and get hooked. So pretty much let the fish set the hook for you. All right, right behind there, there's a uh, half ounce can of spinner bait. And pretty simple with that, we're just slow rolling that um, over the weed tops. Uh, letting it clip the tops of the cabbage. We're looking for areas, there's milfoil out here, obviously a metro area lake, but we're looking for areas that have cabbage. Um, and some grass and just slow rolling that letting that tick over the tops of those weeds and when the bass comes up boom you just your vibration of the spinner bait stops your rod loads up and you got them on uh, so far that's all we've done now uh, we will use jerk baits uh, like a shadow wrap or an x wrap of rapala throw those out snap them let them sit 
snap them. Now the water's into the 70s, we'll do double snaps and we'll shorten the pauses because the fish tend to be more aggressive uh, early in the year. Single kind of soft pulls and let it sit sometimes five or even 10 seconds before the next one, but as the water warms up, and get more aggressive. And then right there, we've got a square bill crankbait. That's a DX Brat from Rapala. And we're just uh, wobbling that, reeling that at a nice medium speed. It wobbles right over the tops of those weeds. Looks like those sunfish moving around up there. And uh, you know, fish come up and just inhale that, load up the rod. You don't really have to set the hook, but it got it. Uh, we're fishing this on spinning and casting gear. And uh, we're using a 10 to 14 pound line, uh, depending on if it's spinning gear or casting gear. We're using the St. Croix rods, Luger spinning reels, Abu Garcia baitcast reels, and Berkeley Fireline Ultra 8 Carrier in 10 to 14 is the line. Uh, that rounds out our equipment. Hey, my son Parker here. Another one came up and slurped down that top water skitter prop. We're getting to about, uh, what are we, about nine o'clock in the morning here. You can see we don't have any clouds, so um, we're getting close to the end of the topwater bite. If you get a cloudy day and calm or just with a ripple like this, you can do topwaters all day long. Uh, but when it gets sunny, then uh, a lot of times by the time you get to that mid-morning, uh, they'll stop coming up on those topwater baits. Players. There you go. So we're getting close to done with that, but the spinner baits catching fish. My son just caught a, about a nine inch pumpkin seed drilled the square bill crankbait. Look good. They're, they're, they're slamming that. Okay, back he goes. Nice job, bud. Yeah, my son Parker on a spinnerbait's got a nice bass here. He's gonna need some help there maybe with that. You get him a lift or grab, that's too big to swing. <laughs> Look at that sucker. Nice one. I saw you just ripped that spinner bait. Got some slack line out there for getting the hook off. All right, we'll get a picture of him and then we will release him. Okay, we got a picture that's almost uh, about an 18 and a half inch here, 18 and three quarters. We're gonna let that girl go. Water bait's kind of slow to here. Um, so we still got the spinner bait going, the square bill crank bait, and I got a jerk bait going here, and I got one felt bigger than he was because he got hooked funny because he hit it on the jerk and not on the paw, so I got him kind of side hooked. So not as big as I thought, he's just coming in sideways, but uh, this is a purple and silver uh, wrap or a shadow wrap. It'll be okay. Um, I didn't splash the camera there. <laughs> you didn't splash that much. This is the number 10 size, four inch. And uh, again, we're just tossing that out and giving it a twitch, short pause, double twitch, short pause. This one hit it on the twitch, so we got a hook funny. So again, now we're just working over the tops of these shallow, well, mid depth beads, six to. 10 foot looking for areas with cabbage uh, and grass mixed in with the milfoil and any spots we find that we're finding fish. Uh, well, you can see the sun's getting high here, no clouds, uh, um, not much wind, so the bass bite's starting to slow a little bit. Um, I don't know how many will make the show, probably 10 or 12 will make the show, but we must have got uh, two dozen bass uh, here, um, all the way from about 14 inches up to uh, um, almost 19 inches. Uh, we're going to, it, it's mid-morning, the bass bite slowed, but the nice thing about this time of year is that doesn't mean we have to quit fishing. We have a couple hours before we have to be home yet, so we are going to head over. We found sunfish. Um, could be sunfish still bedding, that's what we found, but even if not, there will be sunfish schooled in the weeds near where the bedding happened. The small females, that's what the bass are feeding on, uh, but we're going to go look for some of the bigger males and uh, see if we can get on a nice little sunfish bite to end out the morning. So um, this time of year in the summer, get out in the morning and, and get on those flats. 
then it's up to you. If you want to work down deeper off the deep weed edges and fish slower and vertical with uh, plastics and jigs for bass, you can still do that. Catch one here, one there. Uh, but the other option is if you want to uh, stay with fast action, um, you can then target sunfish. Crappies will be schooled up over the weeds as well, and you can finish out the day, and you can do that all day long. Uh, actually, sunny, calm days are best. It gets insects going uh, and gets the panfish active. So thanks for joining us uh, for this episode. Hope you learned a little bit about how to target bass on uh, mid-depth, shallow to mid-depth uh, weed flats some of the baits to use for it, uh, conditions, if you got calm, you can go with the top water, if not, then the jerk bait, the spinner bait, the square bill crank bait, the swim bait, uh, any kind of horizontal presentation over the tops and through the tops of those weeds. Uh, I know we enjoy bringing it to you three generations of Smutkas here. For Parker Smutka and Nate Smutka, I'm Troy Smutka. Thanks for watching, good luck, and I'll see you out there somewhere.